Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, my name's Ben Hall. I am Managing Director of Chalkboard TV. Uh, but that's enough about me. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, there we go. Uh, it's uh, uh, good, nice to have a good crowd in. Um, the format industry is uh, dominated. You could say rightly, you could say wrongly, but it is undoubtedly dominated by the big production groups. And for this uh, keynote series, we're absolutely thrilled because we have three of the most experienced and, may I say, best looking and also best dressed uh, format executives uh, working in television today uh, who have come to tell us a little bit about the secrets of what makes these big production groups tick. We've got Marco Bassetti, who is a, a two times chief executive. Uh, he was chief executive of Endemol. Now he is, of course, chief executive of Banerjee. Amazing stand, but what do they actually do? Um, then we've got uh, Gary Carter, who is, has a ridiculously long job title, so we'll deal with that later. And then we've got Rob Clark from Fremantle Media, who has been involved in uh, many of the biggest format brands. So without further ado, let's crack on, because they've only got 20 minutes each. Please put your hands together for Marco Bassetti. So Ben, how are you? I'm good. Come and make yourself at home. Come and have a seat. So, Marco, you've been at Banerjee a year now. Yeah. Is the job as advertised? Any nasty surprises? <laughs> well, surprise, uh, the nasty surprise was the tax ratio rate in French. In French, you have to work until August, September for the government, and from September to December for yourself. So that came as a surprise. <laughs> um, no, it was great. Uh, my choice it was for a medium-sized company, not with a very huge footprint, expanding many territories, so you have to spend a big part of your time on the plane on the airport. And as well, uh, not present in all the general. I should say that in my experience, on this respect, sometimes when you have to dominant and you have too big in some country, then the market by itself is trying to push you down because they want to have a, a more competitive landscape. As a surprise, uh, uh, I met a fantastic person, a fantastic uh, creative people, uh, entrepreneur as well, like John Murray. With, uh, in the US, uh, like uh, George Grabos in Germany, like uh, Peter Hansen in Denmark. I have a fantastic team in Paris, uh, run by Francois de Brugada, and a fantastic team, young, very motivated, run by Caroline Sporsberg in, uh, in London. And it's a surprise to me came the fact that I start to work for hosts, that they are not just hosts, but they are creative persons, they are entrepreneurs. And when they finish those, they show, instead of going back home, instead of, let's say, go to a bar, they go back to the office and they start to work with other creative people, and they challenge them, and they work with them in order to create uh, another, another show that it will not host by them. And, um, and so this type of, Banijay is a perfect company uh, to be on, on this new year, and I think that we want to deliver a content where there is an audience. Okay. It's interesting, because, I mean, Looking from the outside, and you know, cheap, cheap joke about your stand aside at the top. Uh, looking from the outside, Banerjee does appear to be a company that is searching for an identity. Uh, is that a fair comment, do you think? Or? Not really, because maybe if, if that would be the case, I will not be here to talk <laughs> with you today. And then uh, I should say that Banerjee is also a very young company, maybe the youngest one among, let's say, the big player. And if you look at our identity locally, like, I don't know, Nordics in this candy country, like Brian Poole in Germany, like Bonnie Memory in the US, like uh, Quarzo in Spain, like Air Prod in French. I should say they, they have a strong identity, this, com this company. Uh, I but cannot imagine uh, Shine without MasterChef. <laughs> I cannot imagine Endemol, the identity of Endemol without Big Brother on, on Deal on Your Deal. So I think that there are two ways to create an international company. One way is that when you have a big hit in your camp, or because you create this big hit, or because you acquire this big hit, you can, instead of license in another country, you, have to, you can go there and to launch a new initiative, a production company, and this company will be very much tailor-made based on the format that you have. But there is another way how to create an international company, and when you have a, a confederation of a, such a good creative entrepreneurial person, and you can start to work with them in order to share their, share their experience, to merge their culture, and move the focus from just being just local focus to more international focus. I think, uh, and then, 
you have everything in place in order to create the big hit. And if you come with a big hit, then you have a very solid position in the country, and I prefer okay. this second way out to but, create but it, an international is, company. Uh, again, and, you know, I, I hope you don't mind me asking, but what is the difference between working for a company like Endemol, which is, which is built on its hits, Shine is built on MasterChef, and you're absolutely right, these big groups, they need the hit shows, the big brands. What is the difference between being at a company like Endemol, where you walk in, you go, well, I'm from Endemol, we make Wipeout, deal or no deal, big brother, and hi, I'm from Banerjee, we make... You know which is the more difference, <laughs> more than identity? Is that the channel, they knock to your door because they want the hit, <laughs> instead of that you have to go there and knock to their door, okay? okay? So and that's, let's say, the big difference. But having said that, it's true, for commercial point of view, to have an identity, to have a big ad, you know? Maybe you can leverage your position in your market where you are in. Maybe you can ask for a multi-year contract, you can ask for an output deal contract, but then you have to choose a channel when you have to big it. Maybe there are two or three channels that they want the same hit, and you have to choose one, and the other two, they are, will not be so happy. And then on top of that, if you failed to launch the big hit, because maybe it cost a lot of money to this channel, okay, maybe you pissed off three channels. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not all, always, let's say, black and white. I should say that uh, now in Banijay, we have, I think, what would, what all we need in order to be also us uh, in a position to create a baguette. We create, uh, we have uh, a creative board where we put all the, let's say, best creative person around our group at the same table four times per year. And we start to exchange experience and exchange creativity, not just vertical, but also horizontal. We triple the investment in pilot we have uh, an incentive tools there that uh, it can attract uh, new personality. And I think that with all the charisma and all the talent that we have, I think that we can play a role in the future okay. on having because a big it, it is a, it's, a, it's a little bit of a mystery to the rest of us because you have some undoubtedly very talented people. You have some brilliant companies, and yet you haven't yet managed to, to have the big hit. I mean, you know, that, that's just the reality of it, Marco. We've spoken about this before. Yeah, sure. So, so I mean, and obviously I'm sure that is top of your to-do list, create big hit. It's very hard. We all know that. But, I mean, is there an underlying strategy for creating one, or is it, is it you know, business as usual? But I ask you. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, personally, I think that uh, there is no formula for this. Okay. There are some common denominator, and maybe we can talk about, uh, but there is no clear formula, a proven strategy. Even more, if you look at the money that now is invested in creativity, and the poor outcome that is here now, compared to the past, where you invest less and there are many more hit, you know, also yeah. from pure financial point of view, it's difficult to understand where and, and could be think, the next Do you think next. that's because the development expectation from broadcasters is much bigger now? Because certainly one thing that struck me when I was at Shine was that the, the broadcasters expected the big groups to, to chip in in a significant way in develop, on development. Yeah, I think first, yeah, you're right. I, well, one of the reasons why I think this, first of all, I think that uh, First of all, a big hit has to be a big hit locally exploit. It means that uh, it doesn't exist, uh, on, my, on my view, a central creative team that can create a big hit. First of all, has to be, has need to have a local adaptation. And then I think as well that uh, uh, you, need to be, you need to be aware that you have to share value with the creative person. In one side, could not just to be an employee, and the other side could not be a creative person that he wants to have 90% uh, of the value creation. It should be a balance between mm -hmm. the two. And the production company is a production company that could give uh, a very good execution on this format. It can give you an adaptation. It can give, give you the look and feel that you need for, for this market. So I think that you have everything in place in order to attract in your camp creativity. But then in the end of the day, the creativity has to be focused in the local, local market. Having said that, in the last three, in the last, let's say, four months, we hired um, Paro Castellan in Spain, that is a fantastic creative okay. person, Jennifer Collins in Australia, Gian Andrea Pecorelli. And uh, if I use this event to make an announcement, <laughs> then, Go ahead. may I? I? We just signed yesterday, and I'm very excited uh, to say this, a partnership with uh, David Goldberg. 
the former president wow. of uh, Endemol USA, and we will okay. launch Bunny J Studio, it's not America, a company uh, where we want to develop uh, a new show, especially for syndication and, uh, and network. And David will be, he will be also president of the group. He will be in charge of uh, all our development in an English-speaking country and uh, in all the, co the English-speaking content. And uh, it will work not, not just for US, also for Canada and Latin America. And we have already another company in the US, as you know, Boonie sure. Mori, a company where we produce... And it's, uh, it's Boonie Mori, but that's right, I'm a bit stunned by that. No. I, didn't, I didn't know that was coming. Uh, no. so, so Boonie we, Mori will be independent okay. from okay. Bunny J Studios North America. And uh, I think that, uh, and as you know, David, he created so many big franchises like Wipeout, Stream Home Makeover, uh, Steve Harvey Show, Fear Factor, huh. uh, very successful deal on the deal with Big Brother and many others. I would be happy also with enough of this. <laughs> and I think that in a few years, so I think no that would be on all, one of the strongest players in the US as well. Wow. That's, I mean, that's hugely exciting. And I, I think in yeah. a way, that's the kind of thing that we, you know, again, sitting on the outside, we're, we're, we're almost expecting Banerjee to do because the Boone and Murray, they're a brilliant <laughs> cable producer, but they don't, they don't land the big network hits or don't seem to. That's they have too much to do on the cable. Well, I think that but, but Boone and Murray is most probably the biggest in terms of, let's say, sure. volume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cable production company in the US. And is the, is the deal with David, is that something which, I mean, I, I know how long these things take to put together, that must be something which, did, did you join Banerjee knowing that was gonna happen? Or is no, that, no, okay. no, that's happened just a few months ago and we just signed now, you know. But as I said before, we are very much focused to invest in, especially in the English, mar English speaking market. Sure. As you know, English speaking market, it's a market where, you know, you have more opportunity to create a new format. Mm -hmm. Even having, having said that, I think that has to be locally, locally produced. And may I give an example on this because I saw here that there is uh, another keynote speaker. <laughs> and I'll give you an example of my experience in order to create a show because sometimes, you know, it's quite random the way you create a show. I still remember many years ago that we have a dinner in uh, John DeMol house and Dick Derrick, that is a fantastic uh, creative person, he came in with a with a board game. It was deal on your deal, okay? And this room was John, Gary Carter, the other keynote speaker, Stefan Kubi, me, and, uh, and Peter Bazalgat. And we liked very much this show. But at this time, Endemol was very much dominated by the Dutch, you know? And the Dutch decided to use this uh, fantastic mechanism as a final game of another lottery game. We were not so happy about this. And then after a few months in Italy, we took the opportunity to pitch this mechanism for a NASA's prime time show. Daily, and just 20 minutes, but standalone show. In the old thing in Amsterdam, they were furious, not in Amsterdam, in Ilversum at this time. And, they, and then I still remember that I risked my seat, but what I can do? I cannot lose my face. I already sold the show, and the channel was so exciting. And so the show went on air. And it was a big hit, nine million, nine million every night, six, nine, leading the prime time. It, it changed the landscape there. And John DeMol, because he's a very smart man, then he recognized that it could be a standalone show. He didn't fire me, and the deal and deal <laughs> became one of the biggest game show in the world. So that's just an example, because a strong local advertisement is still a key factor no, to create a big hit. And I can mention many others like this. No, I mean, I, t I totally agree, but uh, that's very exciting about David, by the way. I mean, I th again, I do think that's something where... Me you know, too, me th too. It's, uh, I, think, I think that will mo move the goalpost a bit for you, if nothing else. I think that we're also in the audience, some <laughs> person from... Uh, uh, it's it's interesting, because, I mean, you, you talk about English-speaking markets. You've got, obviously, that's the American piece pretty much sorted, by the sounds of it. Um, is the UK still a market that you're interested in? I mean, I know that there was before you started, there was the whole kind of zigzag thing, but... I like that you ask me this question, let's say, before the end of this year, because I will have an answer, definitely, okay. for sure. All right. Okay, so by October, so in October, if we ask you again, maybe you can surprise yeah, exactly. everybody again. Me. Okay, fine, fair enough, let's move on. Um, uh, so that, that's kind of dealt a little bit, so obviously you're, you're, you're putting a lot of eggs in the David Goldberg basket, if you like, in terms of trying to create an English language hit. No pressure, David, if you're out there. Um, 
But I mean, as a company, Banerjee, I, I assume, must also be focused on kind of medium-sized hits because you've got some good brands in there. There's 71 Degrees North, there's Beat the Host, there's uh, Stars in Danger. I mean, uh, th th they, they must be hugely important to the business to kind of, as, almost as an engine room to keep it going. I love this question because <laughs> I think that uh, a good company should not just be based in a big edge, right. okay? So company has to be solid. And uh, there is, let's say, this kind of, let's say, medium size it. And uh, in some cases, especially, especially with the show that you just mentioned, but also with decoration show, sure. cooking show, we call it, let's say, show that there is a long tail. And yeah. it's a long tail, I mean, let's say, the brand awareness that uh, could uh, give an, a, a multi-platform experience to the, to the audience. They advertise they like very much this type of show because uh, they want to sell their product to an experience. And this type of show, they can give an experience as well. And advertising, they love to start to dialogue with the audience because they could be also, mm -hmm. for them, a final consumer. This type of show are very important for, for a company because uh, through this long tail, you can create uh, an extra value not just, let's say, to make money to the traditional form. The point is that you need to be there and you, you, have, you have to be in the value chain. And as a Bunny J, we have all the service of the tool in place in order to get the value from this. Okay. Um, just very quickly, because it's amazing, we're actually almost running out of time, but what do you see the opportunities for the production groups as being? Um, they, they, they seem to go through phases, don't they? They go through a, a, you know, acquiring phases, then shedding phases. What do you think that the, kind of the landscape is for the big production groups in the next few years? I think that there are huge opportunity because the future will be content-driven, not technology-driven, not screen-driven. Mm -hmm. It's true that there is a lot of discussion about this new generation. They don't like to watch TV. Call it, let's say, the connected generation, that they, they used to have a portable screen with them the second screen, and they don't like to watch TV. And when they don't like to watch TV, maybe they create by themselves. And maybe by became, and they put the show online and they became rich very soon. With this generation, I think that we are just in the beginning. We are in a sort of, let's say, Darwinist evolution. And we have just to learn. There, I think the production company has to risk, has to invest. I think that the company that will be sus more successful in future are the company that will fail more now because there is a lot of space there. But still, this is, is going to be a big opportunity for a production company, but still we are just at the beginning of the process to learn mm -hmm. how to engage this new generation. And for us, this is going to be key. But who will find the best way how to engage this generation there is a lot of speculation about these hubs uh, <laughs> uh, to solve product uh, through that. You know, I don't want to enter on this. You know, I'll let you do something digital guy. Uh, <laughs> but I think that on my point of view, as far as I can see in terms of value and value generated for them, we are still in the beginning. Okay. Well, fantastic. Um, very quickly, I just want to touch on something. Uh, the market for scripted formats is obviously is, is booming at the moment. Is, is that a result of budget pressure? I mean, what do you think that the main kind of drivers are for that? And is it something which, I mean, Banerjee, you're obviously better known as a non-scripted business. Do you have ambitions but, to be in the scripted space? No, we want to be in the scripted space because we, we, we forecast to grow 40, 50 percent from last wow. year to the next year. We just acquired, last year and a half, we acquired screen time in Australia. Okay. Yeah. We acquired last year DLO in Spain, run by Jose Manuel Lorenzo. Uh, and we produced Alatriste, maybe the most expensive, let's say, co-production <laughs> last year in Spain. We just acquired Aurora in Italy. And there is... And a big opportunity there, because I think that like in US, also a good script show in Europe, I don't see any reason why I should not have a digital window, a premium window with, uh, uh, with a digital platform. I would like to say something as well about linear and nonlinear on this respect, because there is a lot of discussion about it. For sure, the nonlinear consumption, it will grow a lot, but there are still a lot of uh, person that they just to watch, they like to watch in a passive mood the show. Sure. So a lot of creative people, they are very much concentrated in a new digital space, and it's correct because you, it's good if you have a very uh, interesting interactivity in your show, but you have always to keep in mind that you have a storyteller, and there are many part of the audience that likes to be passive watching your show. Sure. Okay. Um, 
it's interesting, you know, a final question, really. You, you've been in the industry a long time, uh, since 1987, I think, is that right? Back when, no, back when no one had mobiles and faxes were still a valid form of communication. I don't like um, this. What, what would your advice be to, to younger creatives, just taking yeah, their first tentative baby creative. steps? Well, on my opinion, first of all, I think that you have always to, to have a very good look in your catalog. Sometimes in your catalog there are some hidden diamonds that maybe they failed because uh, it was the wrong slot, it was the wrong host, uh, the execution was not too good, and maybe sometimes you get very much upset when somebody else took this and with the twist they create a new baguette. So keep going to look in your catalog. Second, I would like to say it's good to follow what the broadcaster he will indicate it to you, but sometimes it's good as well, let's say, to see and to understand what the real, the final consumer wants to have. And then as, as a final remark, our job uh, is a storyteller job. Could be linear, not linear, could be short or could be long, could be satellite, could be online, uh, could be whatsoever, but has to be a good story has to be a compelling story in order to engage your, your audience. And this is, has to be in top of your mind always. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the extraordinarily honest Marco Bassetti. Thanks to you. Thanks very much. Fantastic. Fantastic.